Hi everyone and welcome to New Every Day. My name is Carrie. My name's Jen and on today's show we are in part two of It's Not About You. So come back right after this. everyone thanks so much for tuning back into new every day and we are in part two of a message called it's not about you Mm -hmm. and we focused on selfishness last week and how the root of selfishness is pride when you want something for yourself and it's all about me and you made reference of when we're planning our summer or planning events in the future it's usually self-focused yes and I'm totally guilty of that just last night I was thinking when am I gonna get to go camping I need to plan that I'm gonna get to go camping which yes. is it's good to plan exciting things yes but it's it should be exciting because it's for other people so when we turn our hearts towards God and towards others it, it leads to a more fulfilling life yes and I just want to share a quote that I found by Helen Keller so for those of you who don't know Helen Keller was um, a woman who was born deaf and blind mm-hmm. and actually no I, I listened to her book what she um, she was born fully hearing and seeing yes what happened and then she a disease came yes I need to look that up I know so she had for her first year of her life she was completely hearing and seeing and then a disease I can't remember what it was but that is what meningitis I don't, maybe or I know a friend of mine had chicken pox and that caused her to be deaf. deaf yes so I know cuz I always thought she was born that way too and I it's totally like, thought that I know thank you you're welcome amazing so Helen Keller who is not born deaf and blind <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. no I'm I want to speak the truth anyway she um, gave this quote that life is an exciting business and most exciting when it was it is mm. lived for others. I love that she said that because for someone who has had tasted and seen, yes. or essentially, yeah, essentially seen and heard yeah. the goodness of life and and the wonderful colors and all that we experience, and then to have that taken away, that's even more powerful. Yes. So she had a lot to be selfish and inward focused about, but the fact that she yeah. said that life is exciting when it's lived for other people, that's right in line with the gospel. Yeah, and it's. I've, I've heard different trains of thought of how, how we become sanctified, which is a big church word uh, for uh, becoming more like Jesus. Okay. Some people would say, well, you start doing and the heart will follow. So if you, if you want to worship God, well, then just come to a worship service or turn on some music and start singing and then like start the acting part of it and the spirit will follow, yes. right? So at least position yourself in a place to experience. Yes. I've also heard though, the flip side that says, no, we actually need a genuine heart change before. So I, in my mind, I think you need both. Hmm. I think sometimes you just have to step out and the faith will come. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you do need the heart change first for, I wanna say for the fullness of the experience. So with the serving thing, yeah. Um, I totally agree. Yeah. I tend to be most fulfilled when I am serving and meeting with others. But I also know, and this is the key point, I also know that we're also called to times of solitude so that we can spend time with God and be refreshed and renewed. And so, but what what I struggle with is the balance between spending time with God, how much is enough, and spending time with others, how much is enough, especially for an introvert like me. And, and I have no problem with, with people who say, but you, you need to get away, you need to rest. And I totally agree, unless God puts an opportunity in front of you. And yeah. I've always been challenged by uh, the passage where Jesus has just heard hmm. about the passing of John the Baptist. Yeah. John the Baptist was beheaded uh, because of King Herod um, and so Jesus yeah. has just learned about that so he he 
leaves his disciples, gets in a boat, yeah. and goes across. And so the people, though, the crowds, they say, followed him and met him on the other side. When he just wanted to be yeah. alone with God, so he was to go. The goal was to get in the boat and go and withdraw. And the the crowds were there. And when he got out of the boat, the passage says, and he had compassion on them. Yeah. And he healed their diseases. And then it goes on to say that he taught them and he fed them. There's 5,000 people, like 5,000 men. And that passage has always been like, oh, but God, I don't think I could do that. But Jesus said that we should be able to, that we will be doing things that are even greater than what he did. But the key is like that, am I willing to surrender what, and this is what I think I need because sometimes I'll say, but I need this day off so I can serve the Lord. But sometimes the Lord, I think, puts opportunities to say, but will you trust me if I give you this? Will you trust me with it that you will still get the rest and refreshment yes. that you need to continue to serve me yes. if, if this if is... If you give this, yes. this time. Yes. You your time and Be your effort. Because Jesus gave everything. Yeah. For the, it says, you know, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Yes. And it's like, okay... And the cross is was his means of, of death. Like that was a sign that he was surrendering everything yeah. to God. Yeah, and when you look at the the unselfishness of Christ, like not only was he on the cross dying and mm -hmm. suffering and dying for us to forgive our sin, when he was hanging on the cross, his mother and the disciple John were at the foot of the cross and and he said to his mother, look, here is your son, and to his disciple, look, here is your mother, Yes. saying, you now need to take her in and look after her. And it said from that moment on, this disciple took his mother in as if she were his own mother. Like to have that ultimate view of what's really important. Yeah. I want to have that. So let's just think about that, and we will be back after these messages. So see you soon. Jeff Weston, yeah, man. you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much to our partners who make this mm -hmm. show possible. Go to our website, neweveryday.tv, check out our partners page. And if you need to do some shopping, go on Amazon through our website and that helps to support this show and, and make it possible. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for tuning in every week. We really appreciate it. And again, we just, we love doing this. And I'm so appreciating this conversation, Jen, about selfishness and, and how now we've turned our focus towards Jesus, the ultimate example of being unselfish and when I think about you know the the most quoted verse I think in church John three sixteen, for God mm. so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life the beginning of that verse said for God so loved the world that he gave yes and it should be the love of God that then compels us to give but you were saying that sometimes we don't have that motivation in our heart but I truly believe that God's love can transform our heart and change our motives. Yes, and that's just it. What are our motives? Because the, that passage where Jesus talks about um, dying to self, before it, uh, he turns to the disciples and he says, so this is uh, Mark 18, starting at verse 27, 
uh, he turns to the disciples and says, well, who do, who do, you, who do people say I am? Yeah. Well, some say a prophet and some say, you know, uh, Elijah raised from the dead. But who do you say I am? He asks straight up and Peter says, well, you are the Christ. And mm. he's like, well, don't tell anyone because the nation of Israel was waiting for the Messiah to come and deliver them so that they could have a renewed nation for, so, themselves. for themselves. So they knew that, or Jesus knew that if word got out because of their own motives, that they would come and they would hail him as king. And that's not why uh. he came. And so Peter actually um, is coming alongside Jesus and Jesus continues to teach saying, but actually the son of man needs to um, will suffer and die and be crucified. And that's where, Je where Peter was like, no, Lord, it will not be. And he's like, get behind me, Satan. Yes, because the motives were wrong. Yes. Like, it, in his mind, yes, he was the Christ, but the Christ to come and redeem Israel, not to, cr to redeem humanity for God. And that's where I remember asking myself, or making the statement, sometimes we get confused about Jesus. Like, we just get confused because we're like, well, what do you mean you're going to die? Because it doesn't make sense that in order to have full life or to give life to someone else, that you would have to die. That just doesn't make sense. And yet, and the Bible is very clear, and we understand this, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, no life can come from it. Yeah. And, and that passage for me was quite, I want to say like elbow in the side, because it's like, what are your motives? Yeah, and like, it's crazy because... That came right after Peter said, no, yes. oh, no, you're the Messiah. Like, I, I believe that you are. And then as soon as Jesus was talking about something that was counterintuitive to Peter, it was like, no, yes. get behind me. But you know what I like about it, too, is that when, when Peter um, asserted that you are the Messiah, Jesus said, um, this was not revealed to you by man, but from my Father in heaven. Yes. So it was from God, right? Yes. But then when Peter yes. said, um, no, that Lord, you will not die, blah, blah, blah. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. So that wasn't the real Peter. No. I like that. So no. those motives are not coming from the real us or who we were made to be. Right. And that's where Satan just can, you know, drop those little word bombs in our head to say, Hey, that's not what you thought, yeah. right? And then the, and he speaks out of the selfishness and the wrong motives. And what's interesting is even though God had dropped the truth into his spirit, yeah. he, put, he put wrong thought processes around the truth and spoke it out, yeah. which is so, I want to say, convicting for me because I think how many times do I do that? How many times does God drop something into my head and then I put my coding on it, my motives, my selfishness around it because I think I know what's right mm. and then I put it out there. Mm -hmm. And that's not what God intended for that piece of truth. And I'm like, That's ah. interesting. I, I want to say it was Winston Churchill who said, uh, the truth is so valuable, it's often protected by a barricade of lies. <gasps> that's good. Yeah. It's challenging because, and that's what comes back to the selfish motive. So, and I, I remember saying this to my church family. I said, you are a generous, generous people and they wonderful church family. But I want to look at what motivates us yeah. and it's in our relationships. It's not that there isn't a need and we meet it. We do. But in relationships, selfishness will permeate every single relationship. Yeah. And that's what causes pain in relationships. Yes. And that pain comes from selfishness and our own desires, even though we can be so um, willing to be in relationship with some of us, we still bring the selfishness with us. And that's why it's so important to go and look at the root cause and say, why am I thinking about that? Why am I thinking this way? And, and is that the truth? And, and God, would you help me? And I often say, help me to love well. Help me to love the way, Lord, you would have me to yeah. love, not the way I want to love. Because um, mm. then it's like, well, what am I getting in return? So if mm. I do this, what am I getting back? And that's not, that's not what Jesus wants no, either. He says, like, invite the people to your house who can't pay you back. Yes. Because the reward will come from God. So countercultural thinking, right? I feel I was, like she just stabbed me again because another thought went into my head about someone <laughs> I need to pay more attention to. 
<laughs> oh, I, I, I know. And, and, and when we were talking about this, Jen actually had a list of things that are subtle, selfish behaviors that you might not identify as selfish because the devil likes, oh, and I totally see this in my own life. Like he'll paint the selfish thought or motive with a varnish that makes yes. it more attractive or even seem like you're doing the right thing or to protect yourself or to put up barriers so yep. that you are more readily able to help other people in the future. I know. No, but God says the righteous give without sparing. You just pour it all out and trust that he's going to provide for you. But the varnish can look like, well, <clears throat> well, even one of the examples you said, well, like forgetting someone's birthday because you're too busy with your own stuff. Yeah. Or um, not phoning relatives. Not phoning relatives or like not giving someone a ride when you should give them a ride. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, that, yeah, because I've said, oh, I've I'm too busy. I'm doing this, this, and this. As, and I use busyness as a guise for... I know. Doing meaningful things, I guess. <laughs> and I was just thinking, Jen, like, okay, what, what avenue or what modality does God use through the Holy Spirit to then push that pride out of our life so that we can have our thoughts and intentions mm. in line with Him to be unselfish? And I really think that it's worship. Yes. Because in worship, it's... It's where you see yourself in relation to God mm -hmm. and it becomes adoration for Him. Yes. And um, I'm thinking of a quote, I can't remember who gave this quote, but worship is the quickening of our conscience by His holiness. Mm. And it, it causes creativity and awe when we examine His beauty in the world yes. around us and the beauty that we see within us that He has placed His, His image on us and then we give back in thanksgiving to God and I think it's worship that really yeah. puts ourselves in the right position so we can live that out yes and that's worship with focusing on who God is yeah. not what God can do for us that's yeah. not coming to God and saying I need this and I need you and I need you no that's like uh, like how great is our God like, like just, what, what what helps you like just focusing on like the God aspect of, wor of worship and that's funny because we think well but I do need God I do need God but I actually first need to know who God is so I find Chris Tomlin is so good and I've s I feel like I've said this before about really dialing in to who God is and, and leaving us like mighty well well mighty to save is another example of just declaring who God is how great is our God indescribable which actually Laura Story wrote but Chris Tomlin sings a lot of songs that just focus in on who God is. And that's what we encourage you today, is focus in on who God is. Allow yourself to sit with the Lord and, and let Him speak to you. But maybe where some of those areas are in your life that you're holding on to so tightly, or some of the mindsets that you maybe have towards your husband and your wife, or maybe even your kids, uh, or where you've allowed the enemy to whisper lies into your heart, like, I can't believe you have to forgive that person again, or I can't believe they're better. asking, you deserve better. And, and so we're just gonna close in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to move. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you'd move in our hearts. Show us where we're being selfish. Show us where we need to let go and trust you. Help us to believe that you are God and you will take care of all of our needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in and join us here next week for another episode of New Every Day. Have a great week. See you later.